see deliverance take place, whether it's in video or whether it's in person. Jesus said it in his template prayer, deliver us from evil. Now at the meeting, you'll see people falling out. You'll see people weeping. You'll see demons manifesting. This is what God wants in order for you to be free. Yes, there's calm deliverances. People can be self-delivered within a matter of minutes by reading their Bible or a matter of hours or even a matter of months, however long it takes, however deep that demon is. We have a choice to make. Do we want deliverance or not? If we are full of pride, we will think someone else needs help, not us. But Jesus said, pick the plank out of our own eye before we pick the speck out of someone else's. So in these videos you're about to watch, we're going to focus on Matthew chapter 12, verse 29, when Jesus said, go after the strong man, go after the big demon instead of the little one. Why? Because cancer can come back. Uh, addictions can come back. And old habits can come back that we don't like. That's because the big demon is not gone yet. So Jesus tells us, go after the big demon and all the little ones will follow. Matthew chapter 12, 29. In that case, take a look at these and we go through every single strong man. There are 12 of them. Not 14, not 9, 12. Why? Jesus had 12 disciples. Satan must copy everything he does. Therefore, he has 12 strong men. And all these little demons are underneath the big guy. And the big guy is who you need to call out and tell him, get out in Jesus' name and take all your little demons with you. It works. Jesus would not tell us something that was a lie. So take a look at these videos. Learn and... Um, I have a... I have a uh, clipboard and a chalkboard and a um, place where everyone is writing down notes, things like that, please do the same. Take notes so you don't have to keep watching the video over and over and over again. Take notes so you can share it with your, your husband, your wife, your, your friend. Everyone in your family needs to know that deliverance is a part of salvation. We cannot make it to heaven without deliverance. So take a look at these and find the strong man that's been bothering you. Find the strong man that's been bothering your family and blocking your blessings and causing you trouble. And you tell him to get out. If you don't tell him to get out, no one else will. You need deliverance. And we, every one of us need to go through deliverance. And every one of us need to humble ourselves and say, I replace these foul spirits with the Holy Spirit. So take a look at this. With no further delay, the 12 strong men. Pick the one that you need and take care of them. Maybe you need five, maybe you need ten out of you. Doesn't matter. There's been people that have been delivered from 6,000 demons. Remember Jesus said that? The man said uh, that he had a legion inside him, a legion of 6,000 demons. So maybe you only have one or two. Tell them to get out. Oh, I don't have demons, really. The Bible says we were all born in sin. Sin means Satan. Satan has demons. That means we were all born with demons whether we like it or not. And it's our job to take a shower. We take a shower in the natural. We need to take a shower in the spirit. And when we take a shower in the spirit, those demons leave. Well, you have to put clothes on. Where do you put the clothes? Where's your clothes for your spirit man? The word of God. And those demons, when they see you read your Bible, they run, run, run. They wait for you not to read your Bible. They wait for you not to pray. And they come closer and closer. Tell them to get out of here. Leave me alone. And lastly, I want to say this. I teach in my classes, and you'll see it many, many, many times, the three things that it takes to keep the devil away from you, to stay delivered. Number one, read your Bible. Number two, obey it. And number three, walk away from sin. One time I was in a restaurant, and I saw a ginormous cockroach. Now, I'm in California. I love California. I hope I never leave California. But I used to live back east. And back east, we used to call these big bugs cockroaches. Well, out in California, they call them tree bugs. Well, I said, well, that's a cockroach. And that cockroach was crawling up this man's pair of jeans while he was eating. And I wanted to yell, hey, you have a pair of, you know, you have a bug, bug crawling up your, your pair of jeans there. The thing crawled so fast, it came up underneath the table and went right for his plate. And what did the guy do? 
Instead of running and screaming and calling for the manager of the restaurant, he simply took his left hand and threw it off the table, went over with his left foot and smashed it, sat back down and enjoyed the rest of his meal. That's what we need to do with temptation, with the devil, and with every strong man or demon that the devil throws at us. He's going to. That's his job. And if you're not getting mud thrown at you, you're not a sound Christian. So when you know you have offense, you're doing your job. So what you simply need to do is tell that temptation, get out of here. You smash it with what? Not your fist. The Word of God. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. On and on and on. You smash it and you go back to enjoying life. Teach you about the seven feasts. Take a look at this. Teach you about everything to do with the word of God that relates to the Eastern culture. There are so many misinterpretations and innocently misinterpretations of the Word of God because we interpret it in the Western culture when we should actually interpret it in the culture it was written in. Tonight is just an introduction on what a deliverance service really is. Every one of us in this room, except for the angels that are sitting around you, needs deliverance. There is not one person that is perfect, at least not in man's eyes. We were all born in sin. Sin means Satan. Or what is Satan carrying with him? Demons. So if we were all born in sin, that means there's a little devil on our back trying to tell us what to do every day. Trying to destroy this, destroy that, destroy our family, destroy our finances, destroy our favor, our future, and everything about us. And it's our job to pick up the word of God. Can I ask any of you, do you have a Bible? Thank you. Who in here doesn't have a Bible and we will get you one? One. Who needs a Bible? If, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate that. Three of you, four of you, if you need a Bible, we will make sure you get one. It is your sword. It is your weapon. It is your shield. That book is so powerful. I know you've heard it, but I want you to hear it right here today in your heart to where you believe it. You know, we can love somebody right here. Oh, I love you. But when we love them, we spend time with them. And when we spend time with them, we open up the Bible and say, God, this is your autobiography and biography. And I know when I read this, I'm spending time with you. And to all you people around the world watching this television program, and it'll be eventually 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This is for you too. Right now in this church, we're asking for your help. And this may be dating it, but eventually it will happen. The, the city of Buena Park, California, came against this church today. It has before. But they want to shut down the homeless building. They want to shut down the refuge house. I call it the refuge house for these people that are just in transition. They're just in transition. They went through a little dip. And they're getting back up on their feet. And the city is trying to shut them down. So we need the attorneys that can help. We need all of you people that have funds that can help this church with any expense that they have. To help them get the devil off their back. So I ask for your help, you precious people all around the world. They're going to watch this program. You know, there are many times we, we speak a good message. It sounds really beautiful, but where's the action behind it? I'm an action lady. These people are action people. This pastor's an action pastor. The Bible says, be not doers of the word, but hear, excuse me, be not only hearers of the word, but doers also. This church does. Look at this. It's beautiful. These people can eat. They can shower. They can wash their laundry and they can go to work. Every day, come back until they have enough money saved up to go on and fly on. That's what this place provides. I know attorneys. I even know people that, in, that are in government. And I know everyday folks that have been through these dips. And someone was there to help them. Now let's help these people. Someone was there to help you, ma'am, that's watching. Someone's there to help you, Papa. 
Now you have three children, and I can see you in the spirit. So let's help save all these people. Amen? Now, if you all had your Bibles, there's a Bible verse. Jesus said it himself in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Tonight, I'm just going to give you a little uh, outline, if you will. It's a better word for it. Just a little outline to be able to tell you what we're going to study. And if you stay faithful to every class, you'll get a little certificate also for the deliverance class. You see, you can't, you, you can't give something away that you don't have. If we don't have money, we can't give it away. If we don't have wisdom, we can't give it away. If we don't have love, we can't give it away. If we don't have compassion. Now, what I'm going to do for you, help you, you have to do your part too. Life is a two-way street. I will offer you the knowledge, but it's your job to pick it up, do something with it, and pass it on to someone else. Amen? We are not blessed to keep it. We're blessed to be a blessing. So when you're done with this class, if you're faithful, you will get a certificate on deliverance. And once you receive that, you're going to say, I know about deliverance. I went through it myself. Now let me help you. What is deliverance? It's when you get the problem out of your finances. You get the problem out of your family. You get the problem out of your future, your favor. Everything you tell the devil, get out. Pastors aren't supposed to scream. Oh, really? Let me scream louder. Let me tell you. Jesus Christ commanded. And when somebody commands, if that, say, say this little cat that came walking through here a little bit, <laughs> say he went out in the street and someone, and, and someone said, now come on, kitty, now get out of the road before that big truck comes and hits you. You would never do that. You would say, get out, hurry up. Come on, hurry, hurry. And the cat would, <gasps> And he'd run. The dog, the person, the kid, whoever it is, you would command them, hurry, I see danger, now move. Are you a sinner for doing that or are you blessed for doing that? Who has an answer? Yes or no? You're blessed. Ezekiel chapter 33 says, if your brother is sinning or if you see your brother in danger and you do not tell him, their blood is on your hands. So it's our responsibility. And then we have to do it with love too. Say, listen, I, I used to do those kinds of things, or I understand, but you're heading off the cliff. So I'm here to help you, especially you. Get the devil out of your future. Get him out of your present. Get him out of your finances. Tell him to go find somebody else to pick on because you're free from his grip. Amen? Jesus said it himself in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. He said, how can a person go into a house? I'm just going to ad lib a minute. Let's say a thief wants to rob a house. How can he go in and rob that house unless he finds the man of the house first? Let's just use Hitchhiker as an example here. What if, what if he went in and tried to rob Hitchhiker's house? Hitchhiker said, excuse me. By the way, this man has a great ministry. I loved hearing his testimony. And every one of you, are going to have a testimony someday too. And you're going to be bold to tell, look at what Jesus did for me. You'll never be ashamed. Amen? If, if a thief tried to come into his house, he would say, excuse me. And Jesus said out of his own mouth, they would have to take over the big guy of the house first before they can get to the wife and the kids and all the goods and the jewelry and the, Right? Who is the big guy in the spirit realm? Ephesians chapter 6, the New Testament says, we fight not against the spouse that kicked us out. We fight not against the family that won't support you. We fight not against the devil that keeps you in bondage or in addictions. Excuse me. We fight not against the, yourself that you think that you're keeping yourself. I have to have this cigarette. I, I have to have this drink. I have to. Uh, you don't understand. I would go crazy if I didn't have this. We fight not against that yourself that thinks you have to have that addiction. Let me, re, let me rephrase that. We fight against the devil, Ephesians chapter 6, that makes you think 
You cannot live without that addiction. And as a matter of fact, it's that addiction. I know I lived it. Seven years I lived what you guys lived. I was an orphan. Who do you turn to? I learned to get on my knees and turn to Jesus Christ. I learned to get on my knees and say, Father, if there is anything in my life that is not of you, get it out. I want every, every one of you right now in this room to say, Father, Heavenly Father, if there is anything in my life that is not of you, get it out and add what should. Bless me. Get the devil off my back. Get him out of my finances. Get him out of my future and my family. I deserve better because I'm a child of the Most High God. Now this man's crying here because he knows that's from the heart. That means you say it from the heart. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? That's how powerful you can be against the devil. Just that simple. How long did that take? Five seconds to say? Now we can say, now devil, get off my back. Just like we said, now kitty cat, get out of the road before that truck hits you. No, you're going to command just like Jesus did. Jesus was teaching his 12 disciples. How can you go get what you need unless you get rid of the strong man first? The big guy. Well, here's the little introduction to deliverance. This goes on for several weeks. But I pray to God, you're about the 52nd, 53rd congregation I've preached this to, and I have seen lives changed, and I will never stop until the day I go home because I'm tired of the devil picking on good people like you. Enough is enough is enough. Know this, never condemn yourself because the devil will never rob an empty warehouse. That means you, 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 every one of you are full of gifts. And he sees them. So he has to steal those gifts. It's your job to speak what you just spoke and say, Get out of here, Satan! Give me my goods back! Enough is enough! And when you speak God's word, don't speak negative. When you speak God's word, greater is he that is in me, Jesus Christ, than he that is in the world. Get off my back. Get out of my family. And you speak to him just like that. You speak with authority. And he knows, oh, this guy means business. She means business. And they go, hmm, let's see how long they'll do it. Okay, because as soon as you said that, here's the great part. As soon as you said that, chains came on their hands. Chains came on their feet. And now they know they're arrested in the spirit. Let's see if they'll just let me break these chains off. They're going to test you. These demons are going to test you, but so is God. To see if you continue in your negative speaking. All God needs you to do is change the way you speak. Because the more you speak it, the more it will enter your heart. What did the Bible say? Faith comes by Hearing and hearing and hearing what? Gabrielle Hope speak? No. What was your answer? See? Who has their word? If you don't have your Bible, thank you, sir. If you don't have your Bible, I will get you one. In your spare time, you want your life to change, you need to be reading the word. Because every time, whether you're sitting in your car, driving down the street, sitting at your desk, wherever you're at, and when you open up the word of God, guess what happens? The devil goes, oh, shoot. I can't bother her today. I got to get out of here because they hate the Bible. When you open up the Word of God, when the devil leaves, guess who steps in the room? The Holy Spirit. Oh, he says, she's reading her Bible. Let's see how we can bless her today. Okay, most of you have loved ones. Now, when you talk to your loved ones, you don't want your loved ones to ask, Where are you living? What did you do? You don't want them to ask about all your... You want them just to love on you. How you doing? Oh, what, is there anything I can do for you? I just want to call and tell you that I love you. If you have children, your kids, Mom, I need 20 bucks. Mom, I need 40 bucks. Is that going to happen? You're like, uh, honey, you would rather them just hold a nice conversation with you. Just love you because of who you are. 
God Almighty is the same way. God Almighty wants you to just spend time with him and seek his face. And when somebody just calls you up to say, hey, ma'am, I just called to tell you, you are so special. I'm thinking about you today. I'm praying for you. And God's got a blessing waiting for you at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You would be, woohoo! You'd be calling up all your friends. Guess what? Guess what? You're so excited. I, we, you, did, you didn't have to pay anything. You didn't have to do anything except you sacrifice your time for that phone call or that person's visit. God wants you to sacrifice your time reading his word. And when your Bible is open and you're reading it and the tears are rolling down your face, the angels of the Lord that are sitting in your vehicle with you or walking down the street with you or sitting wherever in your office, wherever you're, when you open up that word, those angels are marking it down. Okay, they read Psalms 121 today. Okay, they prayed. Let's make sure this prayer gets answered. Let's get more angels on the job to get that done. And then when it goes to the Father and they say, is this the same man that kept, that was bold about reading his Bible? Is this the same man that stood up to his family in a really loving way and said, I'm turning my life around. Jesus Christ is in charge of my life and I take time to read my Bible. How about you? See, because man wants to know how big of a car you have, how big of a house you have. They want to know how big of a job you have, how big your bank account. But God cares about your heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God sees our heart. And the only way that we will make it to heaven is with a pure heart. Now, I want to tell you what I saw today. If you all believe in prophetic, I asked pastor if I could talk about prophetic, and he said yes. I'm going to help you. I don't need anybody to confess this isn't a Catholic church. This is a non-denominational Jesus Christ is Lord church, period. I'm not con condemning the Catholics because I love them, but you don't have to confess to me. I'm not Jesus Christ. He lives right here. But he, alone in your car, alone in your house, alone in your office, he is your master. He is the one that you pray to. He is the one that you confess to. Understood? Every one of you in here needs to ask somebody, will you forgive me? And I forgive you. The number one reason we go, we, me included, we go through dips in life is because of the bitterness and the offenses that we hold in our heart. Somebody hurt us, and they hurt us bad. It wasn't even your fault. But, innocently, we hurt someone else too. And it may have been when we were little, may have been when we knew better, maybe, maybe when we weren't saved. And we need forgiveness for that sin. So we have to forgive this person of this sin. And the Lord told me to tell you all tonight, in your own private time, confess to Jesus Christ, don't confess to me. Lord, I forgive that person. I forgive that person. I may not feel it in my heart yet, but I know I need forgiveness for what I've done, so therefore I forgive this person. They may have done the most worst, horrible thing, but so was Paul the apostle. He was a mass murderer. So was David. He killed a husband so he could have the wife. God used the worst of the worst of the worst to get his job done because he knew they would repent and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. None of us are perfect. So when all of you in your private time say, God, I, I forgive all these people that hurt me, and may you, may you lead them to forgive me, and I forgive myself that I've hurt other people. And you know what happens, y'all? That demon that was on your back, that was causing your tomorrow to be bad, causing you to think that your life is over, what good is there? Is there ever going to change? That demon's like, oh, shoot, I don't have a hold of his tongue anymore. I don't have a hold of her tongue anymore. Shoot, that demon has to get out. And the more you read your Bible, the demon gets farther and farther and farther away. It's that easy. Every one of our problems on this earth is because we don't read our Bible. Because the Bible has the answer to every problem on this earth. Forget internet. Forget all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. But there's a time for it. This should be your priority. 
I just want to explain this before I close. I won't keep you long. But my goal before all of you leave this place and go on somewhere else is that you leave having your own apartment, your own condo, your own townhouse, your own place because your life is back together. Enough. Amen. Amen. I love this. I love this. I receive it. I receive it. Who all receives it? Amen. Isn't this odd? <laughs> and you know what? This is the great part. Romans 4, 17. When you open up your Bible, it's one of the last books towards the, towards the back of the New Testament. Romans 4, 17 says this. Call those things that be not as though they already are. What's that say? Now, what, no, what, what, that's one of my favorite. I have lots of favorite Bible verses, but that's what got me through my pickle. I said, wait a minute, Lord. And then he told me, wait, 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 Dr. Hope. Don't tell everybody. You only tell those that are on the same level of faith as you that get it. Like you. Like you. Like you. You understand? I can see faith. You. 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 Him. Romans 4.17 says this. And that gentleman sitting in the back too. I see his faith. He says... Instead of saying, let's just say someone is sick with diabetes. Oh, you know, I have diabetes. Oh, you know, I got to go to the doctor. I got to take this pill. I got to take that pill. And the devil's over there going. Because all he has to do is get you to say it out of your mouth. And it's like pouring kerosene on the fire and make it worse. But instead you say, I had H-A-D, past tense, Satan, get out of here. I had that disease, and I don't have it anymore because I'm healed in Jesus' name, period. Let's say you don't have any funds. No, I used to be that way. But Jesus said that I can claim his promises for me. Therefore, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for me. The blessings of the Lord are mine without any sorrow added to it. There's two Bible verses right there I just quoted that you could speak every day and watch. You speak it every day, every day, every day, every day. You eat faithfully every day. You think faithfully every day. You sleep faithfully every day. Why can't you speak the most powerful book on this earth every day? I promise you, this message, if you actually do it, your whole life will be better in 30 days from today. Not 360 days, 30 days from today. You'll get a call here, a friend will call, a family member will call and say, hey, can I help you? On and on and on. And you'll say, wow, where is this coming from? God will bless you because you're speaking his word, not your words, not the devil's negative facts. Let's say, you're, let's say your children need salvation. Let's say your spouse, you want to get back with your spouse. Let's say you need a spouse. Lord, I thank you that my wife or my husband is saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I haven't even married him yet, but I know that you have one plan for me because my life is back together. Everything about me is good. Let me just say this one last thing. I wasn't even planning on saying this tonight, but I see every one of you are paying attention, and God bless every single one of you for grabbing a hold of this, because this will change your life. It did mine. And I'm standing here in front of you to say I used to be right where you were. Don't think that just because pretty hair and a pretty face, they used to tell me, oh, you're too pretty to stand behind the pulpit. I said, you're too pretty to be in the pew. Why don't you get up and start doing your job and preach the gospel? Don't you tell me what I look like. You tell me what's in my heart. You live what I've lived, and then you open your big mouth. Don't you ever let anybody condemn you. Jesus Christ did the same thing. He had the hand of the lamb, gentle and sweet, like Pastor Willie Drake, or, uh, Willie Drake has for you. Invites you all in and will not let you go. Will fight the city on your behalf. So you better thank God by reading your Bible every day. If you don't, you make his job harder. And if you can't read the Bible, you let me know. If you can't read, that's okay. I'll get you an audio where you can play it. And you can listen to it and listen to it and listen to the Word of God. There's more than one way to read the Bible. Amen? Let me know. I'll help you. Because I know the Word of God is your answer. Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples in, in, in 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 29, he said, if you want the devil off your back and you want your life better, you need to get the big, giant demon off your back. Don't go after the little demons of cigarettes. Don't go after the little demons of, 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 of lust or pornography. Those are all little demons. I'm here tonight to tell you that there's big boys. When two companies merge, one boss has to get rid of the other boss. Let's just say the, uh, this boss took over this boss. Now, do you think that before they merge, do you think that this boss over here can come over here to all the employees and start getting rid of all the employees? No. Because the big guy has to go first. So here's the mistake that we make and we think we're okay, we're delivered, we stopped smoking for two weeks. I know I lived it. We, we did this for two, oh, I'm good, I'm good. And then all of a sudden that temptation comes back and you fall again. Why? Because the big demon is still there going, ha ha, you think.